In 20th century United States history courses, one of the first topics that is typically taught in a post-World War II unit is the Truman Doctrine. Announced by President Harry Truman on March 12, 1947, the policy became the cornerstone of American foreign policy during the Cold War and effectively changed the way that the U.S. approaches foreign conflicts right up until this very day. So what was it, and how did it come about? Let's get to it. Following World War II, Great Britain was near bankruptcy. The country had supported numerous European allies over the years, including the Royalist government of Greece. In February 1947, Great Britain asked the U.S. to take over its role in supporting the Greek government. Greece was in the midst of a civil war at this time, with the Greek Communist Party looking to take over the country. Truman and the U.S. government believed that the Soviet Union was supporting the Communist Party in Greece, though this turned out to be false. At this time, the country of Turkey, a longtime rival of Greece, was also under pressure due to Soviet expansion throughout the Mediterranean region. Turkey had also been supported by Britain in the past, and Truman would argue that we needed to help both countries equally due to their rivalry, and it was believed that if both countries fell to communist regimes, it would lead to chaos in the region, especially in the Middle East. Truman argued that this could not be allowed since the region had large strategic importance to U.S. national security. So with this as the backdrop, President Truman addressed a joint session of Congress on March 12, 1947. He declared that, quote, it must be the policy of the United States to support free peoples who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or by outside pressures. Truman would go on to argue that totalitarian and authoritarian regimes around the world represented a threat to international peace and thus the security of the United States. While the fear of communist expansion was the initial threat leading to the policy, Truman was also declaring that the U.S. would provide political, military, and economic assistance to all democratic nations under threat from external or internal authoritarian forces moving forward. Chief among these concerns, though, was the spread of Soviet communism, and the U.S. was committing to helping fight Soviet expansion globally. With the support of Republicans in Congress, Democratic President Truman's doctrine became a reality, and the U.S. pledged $400 million to Greece and Turkey. No American military forces would be sent, so at the time, we would be combating communism with American dollars. At least for now. That would change with conflicts yet to come in Korea, Vietnam, and elsewhere. Prior to the Truman Doctrine, the foreign policy of the United States had typically been to stay neutral as the country often played the role of an isolationist state. This had been U.S. policy in World War I, with Woodrow Wilson even running for re-election in 1916 as a president who kept the country out of the war. And it was also U.S. policy in the 1930s initially when World War II got underway in Europe and Asia, though through a series of governmental actions, we slowly became more and more involved in helping the Allies prior to our own engagement. With the Truman Doctrine setting the agenda for U.S. foreign policy moving forward, the U.S. would now take a more active role in getting involved in foreign conflicts. Under the pretense of fighting communism, the U.S. would enter alliances with several anti-communist regimes over the years, many of which were very anti-democratic themselves. Some of these U.S.-backed groups were also guilty of horrific human rights violations and terrorist tactics, such as the U.S.-backed Contras in Nicaragua during the Reagan administration. When it comes to Turkey and Greece, the Greek Civil War ended in part due to U.S. assistance. Both countries would join NATO in 1952, an alliance that was established in 1949 and built largely out of the foundation of the Truman Doctrine. NATO continues to exist to this day, as does a policy of U.S. intervention in foreign conflicts around the world. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to click that like button and subscribe to the channel. I have new videos coming that you won't want to miss. I'll see you next time here on Mr. Drosty History. Take care.